Hey, Christine. Welcome. Glad to have you. Let us also know where you're watching from. We'll get started in a couple minutes. 10 years. Get that book done. Yeah. Love it. All right, friends, how are we doing today? How are we doing? Um, Michael D. Butler here, Beyond Publishing, coming at you from Dallas, Texas. It's Wednesday, and it's called Write Your Book in 60 Minutes, and it's something we've been teaching for a lot of years. And um, pre-COVID, 
A lot of people, hundreds of people bought the course online during COVID. We taught it for free. Uh, back to back uh, episodes every Friday had eight classes rotate through and it's like 88, 90 people wrote their book, about 55 of them published with us. It was a great experience. So I want to know how long have you been trying to write your book? Pop it in the chat. We're going to go about exactly an hour here, but I'm going to answer questions as well because on this webinar, uh, I want to know how long you've been trying to write your book. I also want to know what do you want the book to do for you? Okay, what do you want this book to do for you? Is it to get you on more stages? Is it to get you on uh, more media and speaking? There's Dan Snell, seven years dragging his feet. Now he's done over 100 media interviews. Good to see you, Dan, from Kansas City. Hey, Dan, our mutual friend George is here from Kenya. Check this out. Good to see you, George. Hello, my friend. It's probably bedtime in Kenya, I'm telling you. Christine Trice from LinkedIn says 10 years. Thanks. Thanks so much, Christine. Good to have you here. And, you know, I just I'm so excited to help people get their books out to the world. Uh, I am Michael D. Butler. I am your host and it's great to be here. I'm a global book publisher in Dallas, Texas, and we're going to get started right now. All right. All right. Well, wow, the comments keep coming in. All right. More media. Hey, Chasen there in Dallas, Texas, more media. Let's get you more media, man. I think you're in real estate. Is that right? Also, if you guys want to pop into the chat what industry you're in, I would love to know what industry you're in. Uh, can you really write a book in one hour? And so I'm excited to uh, dive into this together as we uh, explore together and uh, grab a pen, turn your phone off. Don't get distracted because this hour could be the most important hour of your life. Um, for hey Mary, hey there she is. There's Brooke, real estate, commercial real estate investing. Look who else is here. Uh, real estate, yeah, our real estate gals are in the house. Yes, 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 yes. And Dan Snell says the winsome blended family. That's so cool, man. So many blended families there. Uh, Brooke, Brooke could contribute to that. Hey Dan, good to see you. Um, Dan Payne says want to write a book and get Dave to write a book on the Dave show. Hey, da Dan, that would be great. And uh, let's do it live. Let's do it live right there on your show. And I'm telling you, I'm loving the synergy today, but I, I want you to look at these numbers. These numbers are just incredible that every year in the U S there's four to 5 million new titles every year. How is your book going to stand out? And there's many more ISBNs, Many more IS, uh, many more without ISBNs globally. So knowledge is doubling every month. How will you stand out? 140 million Americans have listened to a podcast or have listened to an audio book. So here, here's the numbers. Hardcovers are up. Um, hardcovers are up 20% each year. There are 20,000 bookstores in the U.S. and libraries are still the number one um, buyers of books. This was the first book that rolled off the printing press. Does anybody know what it is? Pop it in the chat. It brought us out of the dark ages. You know, you study history and we came out of the dark ages into the enlightenment, into the Renaissance. What caused that? It was the printed word, specifically the Bible here. Uh, recently took a picture of that in, in D.C. at the Library of Congress. And Dan says he's wanting more radio and TV appearances. I love it because you know what? One, when you get 100 media appearances on the radio, you were on Al Jazeera TV prime time a couple weeks ago. That's just speaking of prime time, man. You were prime time and they wanted to talk to you. They wanted to talk to you. You know, it's great to have Brooke on this call. It's great to have all of you from around the world on this call watching us from Africa and everywhere. You know, we've published 791 books, 193 authors in 64 nations. George, we need to publish Kenya because Kenya will be our 65th nation. There's real women in real estate. What do you think of that one, Brooke? What do you think of that one? There we go. Career guidance and funding investment. You know, that's a good point, George, because your book can actually help you secure angel investing and funding because it's such a credibility piece, all right? It is a credibility piece. When you've got an investor looking at your group or looking at another group and you've got a book, Boom, as I like to say, boom, baby. Yeah, 
it's exciting. It's exciting. You know, and uh, a lot of our books are ghost written. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Why do you want to write a book? Pop it into the chat. You know, yesterday it was all about the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know, a lot of people want to get rich from their book and some people do. Mm. Now you'll be surprised to know that last night, this thing was not filled with candy. It should have been, but I'm on a sugar sabbatical and it's really good to be on a sugar sabbatical. But you know what? I'm all about the green because the more green we can create, it's more opportunity in people's lives. It's driving more traffic to your webinar, driving more people to your mastermind, uh, driving more people to um, your brand to check you out and to look at you. So we've been really blessed in this industry, but I want to tell you a story. Um, when I was 11 years old, something happened that changed my life. Now, some of you may know, some of you may not know that I talk about it in my book, Finding the Speaker's Edge. And I talk about stuttering as a kid. You know, I stuttered as a kid from five to 11. For those of you that have been around me and kind of know me a little, know that I'm a ham. I'm a cut up. I'm, I'm outgoing. I'm the life of the party. I, I love bringing people together and having fun. But as a kid, Going to school for the first time in kindergarten, you know, people are making fun of me. They're laughing. And uh, I'd never experienced that before because I, I couldn't speak. I had words I wanted to say, but I couldn't get them out. But there was a librarian that saw the struggle I was going through. And she found a book written by an 11-year-old kid when I was 11 years old. And she gave me that book. And I, I got to tell you guys, that book changed my life. I don't remember the title of that book. I don't remember the author of that book. And um, all I remember is there was a picture of a sailboat like this on the front of the book. And what was so cool, uh, as I had my library card maxed out and my brother's library card maxed out because I could only check out 10 books. And I was just a nerd kid from the farm in Oklahoma. And so I stole his library card and maxed it out. So you don't max out your credit cards. You max out your library card. And so that's what I did. And she gave me this book by the 11 year old. It changed my life. I would read this book to my dog, Joe, and our cows, 30 cows on the 30 acre pasture in Oklahoma. And I began to dream. I began to dream of what my life could be like. And I told my parents, I'm going to be a, a minister or a meteorologist because I'm going to be a paid speaker. And I would see those planes flying over and I would tell myself and I'd tell anybody who would listen one day, I'm going to fly on those planes all over the world and speak all over the world. And it's happened. It's happened. Not only that, but my authors have spoken all over the world on six continents. And so dreams do come true. So I'm, I'm forever grateful to the librarian. If I ever see her again, uh, hopefully I will see her in heaven. And this boy that wrote this book, I got to thank him. But been really blessed to work with some amazing people. And uh, we've ghostwritten some books for billionaires and celebrities, but I'm most proud of my four sons and my two grandsons who just amaze me every day. That's what it's that's what it's about. And it's about helping people that are stuck in a situation. So at 1040 Impact, this is our nonprofit that we founded six years ago, and uh, we rescue girls from human trafficking. Uh, we have a total of 398 girls that we've rescued. And there's a few boys, there's a few brothers, siblings. Um, so it's a total of 415, counting our 21 full-time staff that we feed, that we've rescued, that we're educating, taking care of on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. That's feeding almost 40,000 meals a month. And it's all made possible because we're blessed at Beyond Publishing. It's because your stories are making a difference in the world. And this is a big part of what we do in giving back and paying it forward. We actually have a printing press in Pakistan where we print books and translate into Urdu. So thanks for being here today. These are some of the things your book for you. And today we're going to get into how to write a chapter in 20 minutes. Would you like to hear how to write a chapter in 20 minutes? Would you like to hear how you can use chat GPT uh, as an author and uh, not get booted from um, sales platforms like Barnes and Noble and Amazon? Uh, I'm going to teach you the insider secrets of using ChatGPT and AI as an author 
and what we've found as book publishers. So you're wanting to get on more stages. That's good. Media opportunities, those are up, but you're more likely to get the TED Talk or the media or the referral, the new client, if you've got a book. Having a book makes all the difference. And so um, as you can see here, writing a book really sets you apart. It really sets you apart if you're in real estate. Um, more credibility, more likability, more trust factor, more referrals. In fact, meaning planners say publishing a book makes you 68% more likely to get the speaking gig because you've got a book. And what do you want your book to do? I mean, what do you want your book to do? You're, you've written a book or you're part of a book. What do you want the book to do for you? Do you want it to educate? Do you want it to inform people? Do you want it to uh, inspire people? Maybe you're trying to persuade people. Maybe you're a politician running for office and you're trying to uh, persuade people to vote for you. Maybe you're trying to persuade people to make a donation to your campaign. Maybe you're a pastor and you're trying to persuade people to go to heaven and to miss, miss, miss hell because heaven's better than hell. So there you go. Uh, or are you just writing a memoir and you want your grandkids to know what it was like when you were a kid before television and cars? <laughs> what do you want your book to do for you? So a lot of good stuff to think about. You know, one of the biggest things books do, and I get this all the time from our authors, and it's certainly true of me with every book I've written, is not just travel, not just fun. Those are great, right? But what about personal growth? You know, I've had more than one author tell me that writing a book is better than therapy. Now, for a guy that spent a lot on therapy, spent a lot of time in therapy dealing with my issues because I've had a lot of issues and still do, uh, writing books is a great way to take care of some issues and really work through personal growth. In fact, I'm, I'm featuring Tell Me I Can't Hear Jen Duplessis' book in Dubai, right here in Dubai on the beach last year. And we did some video promos there on that global tour with Ilona, where we went to Greece, London, Dubai, filming a uh, documentary, fun stuff. There's so much you can do. And she said, you know, working with you guys was just incredible. She came to us. She wanted to do a nonfiction book. Um, and we popped her into this fiction story with full color illustrations and just a powerful way to present her. So there's a number of ways you can present yourself, but as you write your book, I like to take the advice of president Abraham Lincoln. And that is preparation is the key. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I would take the first four sharpening the ax. And I got to tell you, for somebody that's had to cut wood as a chore on the farm, I would agree that you're going to be sharper knowing who your reader is. You're going to be able to grab attention quickly because right now the new, the new wealth is impressions, eyeballs, and attention. We are competing for attention. Everybody's distracted. And so if that goldfish has an eight second attention span, the human, we've got to grab the human's attention span quicker, quicker, quicker. Now to me, writing a book is like shoveling horse manure. What do I mean? I mean, <laughs> it is. I saw Brooke, your comment right when I flipped to that slide. Don't we all, we're all a work in progress that I would say horse manure. And since it's a family show, I will say horse manure instead of the other word you might be thinking. But growing up on the farm in Oklahoma, my parents loved torturing my brother and I. They uh, constructed a one acre garden. Now, they, they'll tell you it was half an acre, but I got to tell you, I was seven years old and that sucker was an acre because everybody loves watermelons and tomatoes and corn and, and green beans and pumpkin pie and sweet potato pie. You love all those things and strawberry pie and strawberry cake and strawberry jam, but nobody thinks of all the horse manure you've got to shovel. And that's how it is with your book. And the mistake most new authors make with their book is they've been through a divorce. They've been through a bankruptcy. They've been through all of these things. And you know what? They're stuck in the horse manure. You know what I did in my backyard in San Antonio this year is I planted a garden. And this is good because I'm 55 years old and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take some time this spring because San Antonio gets warm. There's basically three growing seasons. You could have three harvest a year here because the day it's sunny and warm outside while the rest of the country is 
cold. So Dallas and San Antonio, they are warm. That's right. Cow manure, horse manure. Did you know chicken manure is the highest rated um, manure? But chickens, they don't they don't produce as much manure as horses, obviously. And so um, I went to the store and I bought all the manure I could. And I hauled it out there and I tilled it up and I was working this and I was fertilizing and I was composting and throwing all these things in here. And uh, that's what I did. I grew a garden because nobody wants the manure. Everybody wants the fresh fruits and vegetables. So to be able to sell books, you want to get past the minutia of your story and what brought you here. It doesn't mean you can't share a little bit of it, but most people don't have the bandwidth to digest a memoir. So you're better writing a how-to book, embedding your story into a how-to book, the five pillars of truth you uncovered or the three steps you discovered or the seven keys you discovered, whatever it might be. Dan says 55 equals grace, grace. There you go. That's awesome. I'll take it. I'll take it. Matter of fact, if I was going to have another kid, I would name her grace. So but that ain't going to happen. So there we go. Grace, grace, planting a garden. You know, so planting a garden was a great experience for me. Um, when I was 39 and a half, just a few years ago, it occurred to me because I ran across my bucket list item that said, by the time I'm 40, I'm going to run my first marathon. And so I get up and uh, put on my running shoes. Now, this is going from couch potato to um, trying to run 26.2 miles. And typically you need a year to train for a uh, marathon. And so I get up and uh, I'm going to run the Route 66 marathon in Tulsa, Oklahoma, November, November the 16th. You can see the date on the flyer there, 2008. So this was May, the month of my birthday, 2008. And I'm like, oh yeah, I was going to run a marathon. I better get started on that. I put on my tennis shoes. I run a block and I'm out of breath. And I'm like, oh, I must be having a bad day. I'll try again tomorrow. Next day, I run a block and two mailboxes, and I'm about to die. I'm about to pass out. And um, I go to Google, and what I do on Google is I type in running shoes and running club. And so I got my running shoes, joined the running club because I needed inspiration when it's 20 degrees and you're training for the Route 66 marathon, and you've got to do a 20-miler on your own, it's hard to do. You can do it with a group starting at 5 a.m. My running group made all the difference. In fact, you can see my family here, my parents, my brother, my sons, my four sons. They came out. They were probably at the time 15, 13, 11, and 9. And they came out and cheered me on. In fact, they ran the last three miles with me. But I couldn't have done this. I couldn't have run the marathon without the support of a team and without the support of my family. It's the same way with writing a book. Uh, a lot of you were putting in the chat, how long have you been, how long has it taken you to write your book? And I just want to go back to some of the con content here. Christine tries 10 years, 10 years. Okay. I think Dan Snell said seven years. How long have you been trying to write your book? You know what? It can be daunting looking at a bare computer screen. It can be daunting staring at that screen and saying, dang, I want to get this book out. I know I've got a life-changing message for the world, but life just gets in the way. And Pamela Kennedy, Chestnut, More Than Rice, A Journey Through the Underworld of Human Trafficking. We presented her book to the governor of Oklahoma and also uh, picked up a movie deal. I think I was the first publisher to... Um, uh, tweet out a full book on Twitter, and we tweeted out our book, did it scheduled through Hootsuite, and uh, Title Card Pictures out of Vancouver reached out and optioned it for a film. So exciting things can happen. She wrote that book in 14 days. She was on a roll. She felt called to do it. You know, writing a book is like shoveling manure, but also writing a book is like flying the space shuttle, flying uh, Elon Musk Falcon 9. The way he so many times has taken off and landed those things. But I want to focus on the takeoff because it takes 
I remember seeing the space shuttle take off in 2005. I was speaking in Orlando and it took off 45 minutes away at Cape Canaveral. You could see it streaming across the sky as it blew past us at warp speed. 80% of the fuel to get it into the stratosphere and to get it outside the Earth's orbit where it can circle the Earth 22 times. So what I want to help you today is I want to give you some rocket fuel. Would that be okay? Put a yes in the chat if it's okay if I give you some rocket fuel in the next 35 minutes. I'm going to give you some rocket fuel. George has been riding for four months. Hey, George, wait a All right. Brooks says, just started the rough draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got the Zig Ziglar people in the house. Good to have you here today. We're going to help you get that book to the next level. So it's so important to know who your reader is. Who reads books? Do people still read books? A lot of people thought that that the internet killed publishing, that the internet somehow killed readership, but quite the opposite is true. Readership is up globally. Coming your way, Christine. Stick around. Stick around. It's coming your way because you know what? Readership is up globally. Knowledge is doubling every month. But you got to realize 76% of your readers live outside the U.S. So as you're writing that book, you got to know who your reader is. 87% of global readers are women. So if you're writing a book for men, you know, my first book I wrote was The Single Dad Survival Guide. And when I first wrote this, I didn't realize that 13% of readers are men. And so the way we package this, once it, once we launched it, we realized that pretty quickly. We're going to need to package this and market the Single Dad Survival Guide to women who care for men in their life that are going through a divorce. You see, the buyer of your book might not be the reader of your book. So you need to think about who's the reader, who is your avatar. 60% of the world reads fiction. So if you're writing nonfiction, a how-to book, you got to realize you've got a smaller t- that's the reason we do a lot of fiction. We go straight a lot of fiction. You can write fiction and uh, appeal to people uh, if you're writing about real estate, if you're writing about multifamily, if you're writing about networking, if you're writing about public speaking, if you're writing about blended families, if you're writing about uh, corporate things of diversity, equity, inclusion, of safety, of um, customer customer employee engagement and retention, whatever it might be, you might want to write a fiction book. And so I'm going to give you some more um, pros and cons on that in a moment. So stick around. The pandemic story is, I, I alluded to it briefly. It just occurred to me, we were so blessed during the pandemic. And I said, you know what? We've been blessed as a company. I want to give back. I want to teach this course every week for the next year and a half. And that's what I did. They do. They need mental breaks. And you know what? People take a four-minute mental break every few minutes. So you know what? There you go, Brooke. I think you might have something there. I think you might have something there. At least I'm writing my books to women. I love women. I love women's events. I love sponsoring women's events. I love publishing women's books. So there you go. I got my bases covered. So uh, that's the beautiful thing. Uh, People's brains are going to take a a commercial break every four minutes, and they might as well be taking a break on your stuff. That's the reason when we publish our book, write our book, we want to use illustrations. We want to, in fact, I'm going to share with you in a second how to write a uh, a chapter in 20 minutes. And I'm going to give you specifically the formula that I've used to deliver 3,000 paid keynote talks. The formula I've used to train speakers for 30 years is the same formula I use to write books and to write chapters because it's a formula. It's like baking a cake, right? If you're baking a cake, you've got to have all the ingredients, but it's very important what sequence you put the ingredients into the cake for it to be optimal. You don't want to leave anything out. So here's some practical tips. Take a screenshot of this, or I'll give you the replay if you're lazy or just take a screenshot and I'll give you the replay. How about that? Number one, write at the same time every day. Uh, I find this more than anything seems to be very helpful and research bears this out. Write in the same location each day during the pandemic. I'll tell people, go ride in your car, you know, and if it's cold outside, don't run your car in the garage. (laughs) You may die of asphyxiation, right? So make it fun. Uh, Definitely stay alive. The amount of words does not matter, but consistency is the key. It's like showing up at the gym. 
When you tell yourself, I'm going to show up at the gym every day or three times a week, all of a sudden, the endorphin levels kick in. When you sit down at your desk or you sit down in your car, you sit down at the park, it's time to write. And I find it's better to do it away from family. It's way, away from kids, away from spouses, noises, and it's distractions. Turn everything off because if your Facebook's on and it's pinging you, you're going to a million dollar idea that could have changed your business and changed readers globally. Visualize your reader in your mind and heart. Once you figure out who your reader is, it's a woman over 40 that's just gotten off a TED stage and doesn't have a book yet that is successful in business, but now she wants to make a difference by starting a new company or a nonprofit. So I know exactly who my, my, my top three avatars are. I visualize her in my mind. In fact, I, I give her a name. I cut her picture out of a magazine. I post it onto my desk in the mirror in front of me. So I'm writing my book to Estella, Brooke, and McGenna. That's who I'm writing my book to. Of course, they're not over 40, so I have to make sure I'm writing it to somebody over 40 that's just gotten off a TED stage. Visualize your reader in your mind. The more conversational you can get, the more authentic you can get, the more relatable you can get, the more your illustrations are going to impact them. And so be wary. This is an important one. Be wary of getting feedback from family. Listen, one of the best ways to kill your writer dreams to being a professional author is to share your rough draft, what I call the vomit draft, your manuscript with family. Don't do it because they want to be objective, but they also are good at being critical. They know how to push your buttons. And then seven, treat your writing as if it's a timeless classic. You know, even if you mention something amazing that happened in the world like the pandemic, that's a little outdated because, you know, a few years from now, the younger generation would be like, pandemic, what's that? And so you want to be careful not to date yourself culturally or in the wrong time machine. Stay in the right time machine. You want to create evergreen product. And the bonus is you want to use chat GPT to help you do research and to organize your table of contents. And I think a lot of you, um, you just barely made that mark. You're just barely over the line. You don't look a day over 37. There you go, Brooke. You're so honest. Most women can't do that, but you are honest. Great, great. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. So what do I use chat GPT for? As, as a publisher, I get this question almost every day. You know, when chat GPT and open AI, uh, hit the market for everybody. <laughs> hit the market for everybody. That's right. They are put them in their place. Is um, see, we're having these little commercial breaks, right? We you squirrel. Okay, what were we talking about? How many windows are open on my computer? So I got to tell you how I use Chat GPT, and it's funny that we're talking about women because I call her a her. I refer to her as she. Here's a question you can ask her. And I'm talking about chat GPT. So what we found, and we've done a lot of research with it on fiction and nonfiction books, and it's like technology, right? A lot of people thought that social media and smartphones and texting were going to eliminate email, but most of us would agree and studies uh, show that people still use um um, email on a daily basis, right? It helps us organize all of our other things. So here's what we use chat GPT for. Number one is we use it for research. I, I like, I like to encourage our authors because we have an author mastermind every, every Wednesday night at beyond publishing is we've had chat GPT experts on, and we've talked about it quite a bit. And uh, we said this, we said, look, Use chat GPT for research. Use it for marketing. Use it for organizing table of contents. You cannot use it for writing your book because when we submit this book to the distributor for global distribution, the question we get asked from the legal department, was this written by a human or was this written by a machine? And uh, you've got to be honest. Now, you can get it to improve your chapters. You can get it to make recommendations. You can get it to help you to tighten up the transitions and to create a better hook. And it might make suggestions of this illustration, maybe use this illustration, or maybe make this point with your call to action. Those kind of things are great things. So here's what I found, creating a synopsis. You might know that we have published the number one selling children's series in North America. If you've got kids eight to 11 years old, the Harry Moon series. Last night was for Halloween because Harry Moon and his sister Honeymoon get trapped in a town that's stuck in Halloween and they can't get out and they have to fight the evil mayor. There's 26 books in this series. We've sold half a million copies and they're full color and they're a great read for kids who have dyslexia and uh, 
reading is fundamental. Purchased 100,000 of these because, hey, kids with dyslexia can read them easily because of the font type and the way we've laid those out. So we're big into children's books and we sell directly into schools. And, you know, if you're going to sell children's books, I, I definitely want to talk to you because it's different than selling books to adults. But there's a there's a way to do it. And I'm going to give you the way I've used it as an example is I been working on and sketching on for a couple of years, actually, a children's series of core values on on kindness and, um, you know, making a difference and financial literacy and things like that for kids. And so I, I just asked one day, I, I'm going to do this experiment. Chat GPT, I need a story of three kids in the Midwest, ages 8 to 11, and kind of just gave a broad thing. And I said, I'm going to write eight books in the first part of this series. And here's my core topics. And literally in 60 seconds, she spit something out for me, which was the characters, the character descriptions, the titles, the subtitles, the synopsis of all eight of the books, uh, how to tie them all together and suggested illustrations on every other page of all eight of the books. I literally had a plug and play ready to go. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have these out the door by the end of the month. And I didn't do it because I, I ended up doing some other things and we're focused on growing the company and building, building our people. But I said, you know, this is something I'm going to do in 2024. I like this. I like this. So pop in the chat. How do you use chat GPT? What do you use chat GPT for? We love to use it for writing press releases, writing back cover copy of the book. Uh, Brooke says she uses it to get past writer's block. Um, Good point. It's not the end all be all. I would say it's all about the prompts you feed it. Uh, I know Dan is kind of an expert on this. He's been studying this. Uh, we love to write social media content with chat GPT, um, but also what to put on the back of the book. You know, I've got a video on what to put on the back of the book, but chat GPT helps you really figure it out because at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't know you, and we're going to talk about how to write your chapter in 20 minutes next. If somebody doesn't know you, you've got to grab them with the title, the subtitle, and the back cover content. Because the, um, the, the science of somebody buying your book of, oh, here's finding the speaker's edge. I've been thinking about becoming a paid professional speaker. Okay. They look on the back. Oh, yeah. Monetize your keynote. Pick a lane. Find your voice. Create a workshop. Interesting. Then they go to the table of contents. Dress for success, selling from stage, branding yourself, delivering the presentation, closing the deal, securing the contract. They open it up. They say, I'm going to buy it based on these practical aspects. We've got to hook them. I mean, I'm featuring a partial series. We're doing eight in this series. It's all, all fiction. Gina St. George will have her on soon. This is fun. Oh, great question. Elena, stick around. Chat GPT. We may talk about it tonight on the Mastermind. And uh, yeah, Dan's using Chat GPT for video. Uh, Chat GPT. You can actually watch the uh, replay for those of you that, that didn't get to see the whole thing. But it's a very powerful tool to add to what you're doing. The main thing that a reader is looking for before they'll spend $25 on an author they don't know is with them. What's in it for me? Always remember that. What's in it for me? That's what they're looking for. What's in it for me? Give them what they want and they'll keep coming back for more. So you got to know, is your reader a woman over 40, under 40? What podcasts are they listening to right now? What events are they attending right now? And so this is going to be very, very helpful. Um, what action do you want them to take? So start connecting with them now as you're writing the book. Start teasing the book cover. This is what I did with all my books and with all of our client books. We start teasing the book cover. It says, hey, listen, I, I've decided to do a fiction book. And which cover do you like? Cover A, B, or C. And you put it out there in the group. And there's lots of author groups where you can get feedback. But it's so important when you're creating a bestseller is that you sell the book uh, months before it launches. And you want to sell the book. Uh, once the cover design is complete, begin pre-selling. Pre-sell the ebook. Pre-sell the paperback. Pre-sell the hardcover. You know, people want to buy hardcovers. Hardcovers are up 20% year over year. The number one um, book for libraries and bookstores is they prefer hardcovers. So if your publisher is not publishing you 
your hardcover, you are missing out. So we definitely need to talk. If you're not getting hardcover books, you're missing out. And pre-selling is so huge. Now, I'm going to tell you how to write a chapter in 20 minutes. You can give me any topic. Um, here's one I, I taught a lot during the course during the pandemic was because a lot of people's credit was getting hit because of the layoffs and everything that was going on. I said, okay, let's write a book on how to improve my credit, um, 30 points in 60 days. Okay. So that's, that's the book. It's the subtitle of the book. It's not necessarily the title of the book because may, I really like single syllable and double syllable, like credit worthy. That's four syllables. It's a little long, even if it was just credit. What if there's another book called credit? That's okay. We're not talking about covers right now. I'm telling you how to write a chapter in 20 minutes. So one of your um, one of your chapters is how to improve your credit by 30 points in 60 days. Um, so your statement is simply something like, hey, in this chapter, I'm going to show you how to improve your credit by 30 points in 60 days. OK. Now I'm going to do an argument, which is devil's advocate, because these don't have to be in order. Hey, if I improve my credit score uh, 30 points within 60 days, isn't that like a black hat thing that's really going to ding my credit and Experian and TransUnions and the others are going to uh, look down upon me because I did something shady? Now, a lot of people think that. That's the argument. I used to think that too. Now you want to establish credibility. You want to quote a reliable source, either a credit expert or one of the credit bureaus. According to Experian, in a 2021 report, they said X, Y, Z. So that's your credibility. Now you're going to further explain what that means. Let's say you've just gotten out of college, you landed a new job, and you got approved for a mortgage. Uh, but after you bought the house, three months later, you lost your job. That could be an illustration, but it also could be an explanation. The explanation says it doesn't matter if you're in your 30s, 40s, or getting ready for retirement. If your credit got hit during the pandemic, within 60 days, you can improve it, and I'm going to show you how. Now, let's take Tina and Tanya, or let's take Bob and Sue, or whoever you want to name. Let's take two different people. Recent college grads, they're in this situation, they got high student loan debts, or let's take the couple that's nearing their retirement years, they're in their early 60s, mid 60s, they're thinking about retiring one or both of them. Then you give an illustration, your story, you tie that in, and then you say the call to action is, hey, listen, go to my website now or click on the QR code. This is a soft pull. It's not a hard pull. It's not going to affect your credit, but you'll get a free assessment from us. See, this is a beautiful thing about an author. As an author, if you're a fiction author, even, or not, particularly if you're a nonfiction author, you're probably building a list, right? You're building a community. You want people to buy your stuff, come to your event, join your mastermind, show up for a webinar, sign up for your coaching program or whatever it is. But fiction authors need and want that too. Maybe as a fiction author, you want them to come to your book signing. Maybe you want them to buy your next book. You know, we're about to launch a uh, 12th book in a series for Dee Dee Cox. Dan, you met her, and she's got romance novels out the wazoo, and they're all selling good, and they're all tied to themes, like fur baby themes, like sports themes, like farm themes. Those are, those are her themes. She'll do three or four books in a series, then move on. And so what do you want them to do? What's the call to action? So, Dan, maybe your call to action, you know, depending on what, you know, if you're in real estate or whatever industry you're in, you want to tie it back to a bigger picture. I love it when uh, I'm always reading books and there's a QR code at the end of each chapter to go here or watch this YouTube video or fill out this form and do something else. So with how to write a chapter in 20 minutes, did anybody have a question on that? I went over it pretty quickly. I hope that makes sense. I've got a full on video. If you want the whole thing, I'll send you the video where I do a deep dive in that. There you go, Dan. That's called humor right there. That's called humor. There you go. I'll take some of that as well. Uh, humor is a good thing. So there's three types of publishing as you're writing each chapter in 20 minutes. And the beautiful thing for that, because two of my sons are chefs and um, they tell me all the time, Dad, 
there's just four food groups. It's all about the preparation and the presentation. And, you know, last night I grilled steak and sweet potato and a delicious salad. And, you know, today I'm having leftover steak and it's great, but not every day are you going to do leftovers. Some days you'll go out to eat and order something new, but at the end of the day, it's just four food groups. So you're asking a question. Are you having relationship problems? Are you struggling to retire financially? You know, ask the question that's going to tee up the customer to want to buy your book. Yeah, put yourself out there. Yeah, I love it. I, I love I love how we uh, <laughs> I love how we get all these questions. Put yourself out there, Dan. There you go. Get some good dating advice right here on Mike's webinar. <laughs> There's the traditional publishing self-publishing or hybrid publishing. I'll give you a quick quickie on what that's about, okay? When you've written your book, congratulations, you did what only 15% of Americans do, run a marathon and write a book, and uh, about the same in the world. Europeans, people living anywhere in the world, say I, 15% say I want to write a book. Good, you finally finished your book. Most people are too afraid of, most people are too perfectionistic to get their book out because they're afraid there's a semicolon colon or a comma out of place. And guess what? They'll never launch it because they have a, this perfection uh, thing and, and they just self-sabotage and they never get it out. And the best way to get a perfect book out is to get the first version out, get the first version out. And that's what, that's what makes it happen. Get the first version out and then the other, you can improve on the second and third edition. You can always add more to it. So you can either self-publish. That's where you do everything yourself. You know, that takes you, uh, you know, dozens of hours of watching YouTube videos, figuring out how to edit, hiring a, a cover designer. Yeah, that sounds good. Two chef party at Michael's. I love it. There you go. Let's do that. All four of my sons play guitar and I play guitar and then they can cook and we'll just jam and wait for the food. There you go. And um, traditional publishing is where you're looking for a New York publisher, but you need two million followers on social media like a Joel Osteen or an Oprah Winfrey or a Chuck Norris. And you really wouldn't want to sign that deal because the publishing company owns the rights. They're only going to pay you seven to 15 percent. And you're not going to be able to repurpose any of your content. And they're going to want to work you like a dog speaking everywhere and doing media interviews. So it really comes down to slavery. You're working for them as a slave and it's indentured servitude. So if you do get an advance check, it's just a payday loan against future royalty payments. Most people that get a traditional deal and get a royal, get a uh, advance check, they never get royalties on the back end because it's all invested in what they made on the front end. So would you rather have a payday loan up front or would you rather plant a garden and have organic fruits and vegetables from a farmer's market? That's that's what I'm asking. So we're shoveling manure right now. You're figuring out who is your reader. You're figuring out what do you want this book to do for you? You're figuring out, I've been trying to write this book for 10 years. How can I finally get it over the goal line? Because right now is the time, November and December is the time to... Um, get the book cover out there and start pre-selling it. You don't have to have a book done to pre-sell it for four months. We've got book covers that we're launching next week and the next that we're going to pre-sell and release in April. And guess what? You can capitalize on all those pre-sales because you've got an awesome book cover and you know exactly who your reader is. Self-publishing is when you do everything yourself. You're going to end up spending thousands of dollars, you know, doing the EPUB conversion, doing the editing, doing the cover design, doing the back and forth. It's like hiring a plumber or doing the plumbing and the electrical work yourself at your house. Hey, if you've got a plumbing electrical issue, do you call a professional or do you go to YouTube? I hope you don't go to YouTube. But if that's your thing, some people like getting their hands dirty. Or you can do hybrid publishing, which is what we do, which is the best marriage of both worlds where you own the rights, you make the lion's share of the royalties. We give you global distribution, just like a traditional publisher would, but you make the lion's share of the royalties and you get total veto control on what the uh, cover design looks like. And if you want to go with that cover and what you want the interior design to look like, you get the full details and the veto power over it. Yeah, farmer's market. That's right. No no antibiotics, hormones, steroids injected into this right here because it's called organic. I'm going to call it organic hybrid. How about that? Organic hybrid. So which one do you want to go with? So you got you to ask yourself the question with 4 million books 
launching this year, not to mention the other millions uh, outside the U.S. that don't have ISBN numbers, how are you going to stand out? How are you going to make a difference? How are you going to grab somebody's attention and get them to look at your book and to, um, you know, consider it and, and to buy it? Most people, even if they do buy your book, they never read past page nine. And so if they don't read past page nine, how are you going to impact them? But here's the thing. If you can get them to read to the very, very end, you can get them to spend $10,000 with you. Because for the person that reads past nine, page nine to page 150 or 160, and they read the entire book, they're going to, they're going to do, they're ready to spend money with you. They're ready to sign up for your coaching program. They're ready to invest in your real estate. They're ready to show up at your event, get a VIP ticket at your event. They're ready. They believe in you. So how do you get a complete stranger to go from being a tire kicker where they're not going to spend 20 bucks, the spending 10 or 20,000 with you? It's becoming a master storyteller. It's organizing your content. How are you going to hook the buyer, keep them turning the page? What are you going to put on the back cover? As you shop around for publishing, here's what you got to think of. Okay. This is what we charge. This is about what every hybrid publisher charges for publishing your book, for designing the book cover, for doing the interior design and layout of your book cover to the copyright registration so it can go into libraries, so it can go into bookstores, ISBN assignment for the, uh, looks like my editor misspelled assignment, so I caught it <laughs> for the hardcover and the paperback. We'll fix that. That's the thing. Good question, Brooke. Why is an ISBN important? Because if it's if, if, if it's not indexed with an ISBN, it's, it's like a barcode at the store it can't be purchased. So if it doesn't have an ISBN, even though you wrote it, uh, it doesn't exist. It's like growing food in your backyard and you go to the farmer's market, but you can't sell it because you don't have an ISBN. It's not in the system. You can't sell it at Barnes and Noble. It won't sell at walmart.com because it's not indexed. It's not in the system. The Library of Congress does not have a copy of it. So that's why that's important. Uh, Library of Congress, very sim similar, focused on the library distribution and the ISBN focused on the global book sales on um, indexing for topical and global search. So when people search for it, a bookstore in South Africa, South Korea, or South America wants to buy your book, that ISBN helps them. The reader walks in and says, hey, do you carry Brooks' book? And it's like, no, not yet, but we can get it here for you by tomorrow. And they come back and they get 10 copies of your book because you got an ISBN number. So the look inside feature is so important to feature that people want to want to look under the hood. This is very important because if you're self-publishing and you're trying to get your ebook up, do you know how to do an EPUB three format? That's the international industry standard so that your ebook reads on all mobile devices, readers, iPads and computers. Very important. You don't just load a PDF or a Word document. It's going to be all jacked up. If you've ever seen your self-published author friends and they're embarrassed and you're embarrassed for them because their book's all jacked up, that's what they did. The most important thing is this, the print file submission so that your paperback, your hardcover, your ebook goes to hundreds of sites, uh, the paperback, the ebook, the audio book, the paperback, the hardcover, the ebook, everything is available globally on hundreds of sites, not just Amazon, because Amazon is only 50% of the world's book sales. Very important if you want distribution beyond the U.S. because the readers are outside the U.S. And uh, in fact, Americans don't read. 85% of Americans never buy or read another book after college. So that's why we focus on global distribution for you to build your brand beyond the U.S. So hopefully you can coach clients and bring on customers outside of the U.S. And de nada, you bet, Brooke, you bet, whatever. Pop your questions into the chat, guys. I want to answer your, your questions here. Very important, getting your audio book. Audio books are up um, year over year. Audio book on iTunes, ACX, and Audible. Very important. An Amazon bestseller. How important is this? A lot of people are saying, hey, is it really important to have an Amazon bestseller, or is that kind of phony and fake? Not at all. It's so important because... You, when, you, when you reach bestseller status on Amazon, there's about 30 bestseller lists. Amazon's the first and the most easy to do all the way up to the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times bestsellers list. These are all important lists. So when you do it on Amazon, 
It's about the algorithms. It's about, hey, people that bought but this book also bought this book. And when you go number one on Amazon in a category that's appropriate, it helps your book sales. It helps other people find your book. Very important. You know, a lot of people charge a lot more for that than we do. Um, editing, I did a cost estimate here based on a 150-page book uh, because it's based on word count. We come in at editing three cents a word on a professional line edit. You're, you're all in with us or anybody else. $8,300, okay? That, that's what you're looking at. And then we're doing a November promo. But before we give you that, I want to give you all the bonuses we're going to give you. We're going to give you the first media interview on the Michael D Show, which gets thousands of views. We're going to connect you with our podcast network. We got a podcast network. We've got a little old lady in Chattanooga, Tennessee, wrote a book of faith, never had a media interview. She just got on there. And in a week's time, she's got 13 podcast interviews booked. And I think she's got three more. So it's a total of 16. Um, that's 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 just un unheard of. It's incredible. So you get introduced to our podcast network. We put you in our author Facebook group, which is almost 1,800 now. And... Um, that's a $500 value. You get our annual events in the U.S. and beyond. We're always doing events. Alina says, how do you go number one if nobody knows you? Very good question, Alina. And the cool thing is because you've got a book of poetry coming out with us this, this fall. And, and that is the most reason you want to go number one on Amazon because if nobody knows who you are, that's the best way for them to find out about who you are. So we shop the categories. We do the keyword research. Uh, I do, a, if you type in my name and Amazon bestseller on YouTube, you can see I did a video about it. I, I go into more detail about it, but it's really about getting the algorithms juiced. It's getting uh, the people on, on our list and we spend money at that. We do pay-per-click ad dollars within the money that you've spent with us or that you're spending with us to um, to uh, make that happen. So we make sure, depending on how many books are launching that week in that category um, around those keywords, uh, we make sure we have enough people buying it and we just spend more money on ad dollars. So it's uh, it's beneficial. You get the weekly mastermind that all of our Beyond Publishing authors get access to where we have experts. We have, uh, we, we're talking about movie deals, how to option your book for a movie this month. And we're talking about chat GPT. We're talking about our storytelling masterclass. And we're also talking tonight about how to build a list. So all these important topics that we cover on a weekly basis, totally free, $1,000 value per year. You get a one hour coaching with me. So it's not a Zoom webinar. It's a one on one where you ask me all your specific question. Yes, yes, yes. Coming, coming. So we, we hold off until you're ready and you're pretty much ready because your book's launched. So we'll get you in there. And Alina, if we haven't sent you the link yet for the author, author group, we'll send you that today. And uh, you get a one hour coaching with me where you can do a deep dive, answer these questions. Um, that's a great question, Brooke, on the Audible. What's the easiest way to record the audible version? Listen, um, if you've got a microphone, if you podcast from home and you're on Zooms and you've got a professional mic, this is a $100 microphone. No need to go into a studio. Of course, if you're like Alina and you're there in uh, um, Burbank, California at ABC and Warner Brothers Studios and NBC and all that, hey, it might be cool. There's a lot of people with recording studios there in the music industry and in the TV industry. You can go record it and they'll literally do the recording for you for just a few hundred dollars or you can do it from right there at home. We got a video link on how to do it. We show you how to do it. And we're going to give you this $14,000 value for $49.97. That's what we're doing because we, we love you. We believe in your story. We believe in what you're doing. We want to help you get your book out. And this is basically at our cost. It's just right over our cost to cover our team to get everything done. And uh, $8,000 publishing value and all the extras that uh, we charge for. Um, when somebody comes in on our platinum, um, publishing, you know, they end up paying nine or $10,000 and all total all in about $14,000 by the time they do that first media interview that we charge them for and everything else. So we're offering this for one time 49 97 or two payments of 27 five. So, um, that saves you about $10,000. So you can take a screenshot of that. And here's what it looks like with my animation, because I was so proud of my animation, and maybe it won't animate on StreamYard. Let's see. <laughs> okay, there it is.
<laughs> it ends uh, Friday the 3rd. So Friday the 3rd. So you get it all. You save about 10 grand. We get started on your book right away. And the first thing we do is consult on your book cover and start pre-selling your book cover. Schedule your launch, even if it's a few months out. And we give you access to the course on how to write your book that I teach video format. Uh, uh, every aspect. I do a deep dive into how to write your chapter in 20 minutes, how to come up with a title and subtitle and those things. So if you have a question, pop a question into the chat and you can actually um, jump on my calendar. If you need some more clarification, you want a 30 minute meeting, you can scan the QR code or go to getpublished.beyondpublishing.net. Jump on my calendar and schedule with me today or tomorrow or Friday. And I'll answer your questions or you can text. And if you're coming on as a customer, you could go ahead and block out your one hour uh, consult with me and we'll do the one hour consult. And there's my cell phone. If you prefer texting me on the phone, it's 918-955-3227. And Brooke, I'm going to text you uh, the Facebook group and Alina as well, because both of you are ready for that. Cool, cool, cool. All right, all right. So if you have a question, pop it in, pop it in. So glad to have all of you watching here today from literally around the world. We had Kenya in the house with George, Christine, 10 years. Christine, we hope you don't wait another 10 years. We'd love to help you get it out this year, really, because you know what? Now is the best time. The future belongs to those who get there first. Um I like to say what the Chinese proverb is that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Today. That's right. That's right. Boy, I, I loved all the comments in here. This was great. Great comments today from everybody. All right. You finished your dissertation. There's Dan Payne. I love it, man. Stand up comedy and doctoral dissertation. I think it's great. Motivational speaking. Yeah, brother, let's reconnect. Now's the time to do it. Um, this promo ends midnight on Friday the 3rd. Friday the 3rd. So if you're the decision maker, just reach out to me directly. If you need to speak with your significant other, have them join me on the, uh, have them join me on the, uh, oh, thanks, Gail. Join me on the Zoom. Gail, she's a marketing, she's doing a startup. Good to see you, Gail. All right marketing. Oh, you love the hat, did you? Yeah, this was from yesterday, right? We had some people on our on our live stream yesterday going all Halloween on it. So I thought, oh, I can go. I can go St. Patrick on you. We're going to find that pot of gold. <laughs> Gail, you knew that was my answer. Oh my goodness. I don't remember at what stage we were talking about there. But if you got a question, pop it in the chat. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I do want to answer questions, and those of you that have, oh, good, Brooke, thank you. Thanks for being here with us today. I know you're, you got some plans in the works, so give me a shout. Let's definitely talk. Oh, chat GPT, okay. There you go, good. So you knew I said, you don't let chat GPT write your complete book. That's right, but it's kind of like going to a matchmaking service. You don't let them line up your next spouse, but you can let them line up your next date. So, I mean, there's... Don't throw the baby out with the bath water because it's, it's a tool, right? It's kind of like buying a car online. I go to these apps when I'm ready to buy a car and, um, you know, I put in what I'm looking for and I do my shopping, but then I'm not going to really buy a car out of a vending machine. I don't know if you've ever bought a car out of a vending machine. Some people do that. Maybe I will on my next car, but for right now, I personally like to go drive it. And I get it that they'll deliver and you've got a week or whatever. But I, I personally like to go touch it, smell it, feel it, floor it, all those things. And, um, well, it's definitely fun being with you guys. The promo ends Friday. It ends Friday at midnight in central time zone, Dallas time zone. So we're glad you joined us. I hope you learned some great things about writing your book, about writing your book in one hour. Uh, at least outlining it one hour, because when I shared this story at Atlanta recently at Global Women Wealth Warriors, and I had 60 minutes to speak, the topic was how to write your book in 60 minutes. And so 
another time I was speaking uh, on like a clubhouse room recently, and it was like how to write your book in five minutes. And so the main point I made was getting past the minutia of the manure in the garden to get the fruits and vegetables. You don't want to include all the trauma and pain in your memoir. You want to focus on the how-to of what's in it for the reader. So let's have fun together. Let's get reignited about your story. Let's save you $10,000. And uh, you can do two payments of, you know, give me a down payment of $27,500 by this Friday midnight. And we're rocking and rolling. We're going to work full 100% with you like it's fully paid. And then you're just going to do the other payment 30 days from now. And so we get started. Uh, we get your brain going. We get your creative juices going. It's like coming to see, see our team on your book cover is like coming to a marketing mastermind session around your book. So it blows past the limiting beliefs that you've imposed on yourself about why you haven't been able to write this book. And this is what we do for people. This is why we've been able to get 791 books out in the last six years. Were they all perfectly edited? Heck no. When you brought your kid home from the hospital, was he perfectly? Was she perfectly? No, they grow into perfection. You have to learn to love them. They have things that annoy you. But, you know, that's what spouses and kids are for. Books, you get passionate about books. This Your, your, your soul is going to fill this book, right? And so it's the expression of you as the creator. I mean, in seven days, God, or six days, God made the heaven and the earth. And I'm looking at all the beauty of the beaches and the mountains and the animals. And I'm realizing this incredible thumbprint by an amazing designer. That's what your book is. All right. That's what your book is. You got a big idea that's awesome that fits into a chapter. You're 10% there. You have 10% arrived. You got another chapter idea. You only have 80% left. Hey, listen, by Friday, you could be 50% done with your book. By next Friday, you could be 100% done with your book, like Pamela Kennedy Chesnut. Well, that's a great question, Alina, and I'm going to close out with this question. Alina says, because she's got a, a collection of poetry, they're just, just lovely, delightful poet poems, and you're thinking about a title for your book. So... Chat GPT is a great idea, and we'll pop it in the, the URL here. It's free. There's a, there's a there's a fee version, but a lot of people think the the uh, OpenAI Chat GPT free version is better than the twenty dollar a month version. I'm prone to agree. Um, right here, I'll put it in our private chat, and I'll put it in the public chat, so you can just click on it from there. And go ask, I'm going to put it in the private chat so you can copy and paste it. Um, log in, play around with it. Say, I would ask it a question like, Chat GPT, I'm writing a book that's a collection of poems. And what you're going to ask it is prompts. You're going to say, my target age is a teenage woman, age 15, up to 24-year-old woman um, who's optimistic about life, but also going through some challenges. And what is a good title and subtitle? And I would I would copy and paste three or four of your poems in there. And she will give you back three or four ideas of titles and subtitles. And then tonight in the mastermind, bring it to the mastermind, copy and paste me on an email, and we'll we'll discuss it. Okay. So that's that's gonna be a lot of fun. That's gonna be your homework today. And you could also go ask YouTube that question. Um, and there will be you know, 515 year old kids that will be showing you how to use chat GPT, but we'll check in with you tonight. Thanks for joining us on the webinar today, how to write your book in one hour. This has been so much fun. Um, the feedback has been incredible. We've had people from around the world, from the continent of Africa and <coughs> places all across the USA. And it's been fun hearing your comments. There's a great interaction and I appreciate everyone for being here today, and you know what? I don't know that we're going to do this again. This is probably going to be our last one because, hey, we're going in the holidays. This is the busy time. This is the last promo we're doing. We're not doing any promos going into December and January. This is the only promo we're doing. So if you're going to do this one, you want to take advantage of it.
because it's here to help you. This is to give you an extra push, an extra kick in the seat of the pants. It says, hey, why hasn't the world heard your book yet? Why hasn't your story gotten out into the world yet? Got a question? Jump on my calendar. Shoot me a text there at 918-955-3227. And Zig Ziglar used to say, we'll see you at the top. And I'm going to say, we'll see you in the bookstore. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Let's change the world with the message in your book. God bless you. Excited to be your friend. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.